I love data and have for almost 20 years now. I think it represents one of the last true things we have in this world. Let me explain. I got into a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Um, I grew up poor with just me and my mom on the west side of Phoenix, Arizona. I was a skater and not the cool kind like we have now, but the kind that got into a lot of trouble for skating up curbs and benches and messing them up. That was until I found my love for technology. I was 15 and I went to a charter school where you could learn at your own pace. And I really fell in love with this. It really worked with my style of learning. I could bust my butt and graduate early so I could, you know, have more time to go skate, of course. The thing I didn't realize, however, was that I would fall in love with technology during this process. And it kind of happened by accident. All of the coursework was computer-based and we just had teachers roaming around to help us if we got stuck. In one of the programs, I found a way to hack it so I could skip the lesson and go straight to the test. This was for a class I had already taken prior to coming to this charter school. It was in typing. So I was really excited the fact that I could just skip the lessons, which I didn't see as necessary, and get straight to the test and finish the whole class quicker. At that exact moment is when I realized that if you could figure out how to make technology do what you wanted it to, and we're talking the internet was barely even around at the time, and most computers were built by hand, if you could figure out how to do all of that stuff, then you could conquer the world. And whether or not that was in my future, I figured I could at least make a good enough living to have more time to go skate. I mean, it's all I really cared about at the time. With a fire lit under me, I was able to finish high school before I turned 17 and shortly after started college. I found myself drawn to computer programming and accounting, both fields with definite type solutions. Unlike other areas, in accounting and programming, your solutions either worked or they didn't. Your program ran or threw an error. Your balance sheet zeroed out or it was off. Not long after, I landed an internship at the phone company MCI on their help desk. This is when we had phone companies. Back then, we weren't so specialized like we are now in the tech world. We considered ourselves technologists that could handle pretty much any tech problem you could throw at us. So working in tech in this era was a pretty unique time. Remember, we didn't really have much of the internet. That was a brand new thing. And when you were in tech, you kind of touched and saw everything. This is when I found my love for data and my, my passion for understanding information. I switched to the reporting team only after a few months on the help desk and I was in love. Back then, I would come into the call center around 6 a.m. to run the morning reports. I would collate them and staple them all highlight the important parts, then put them on over 42 supervisor's desks every single day. I was at MCI for about four years until they closed operations after being bought by Verizon and then kind of shuffling everything around. And during my time there, I learned a ton. I met a ton of great people. And I also had the opportunity to pursue other areas, which would have clearly made me a lot more money at the time but none of that mattered to me. I loved data and that's all I wanted to do. So I always stayed true to that one area, that one pursuit of making sense of information to help people. I spent the next 13 years or so in various roles, always focused on helping companies make the most of their data. My career really took off when I decided to start consulting. So naturally, my first client as a consultant was Facebook, naturally. I started a Facebook in 2012 when they hired me to implement a data analytics platform named Tableau. I spent about three months on site architecting the system, then implementing it, migrating their old content over to the new system I just implemented, and then training hundreds of their analysts on how to use it. Towards the end of my time there, I got to witness them go public, and this was a special moment for everyone there, myself included. I felt like the data geeks had finally won. And one of the things about Facebook that was special, not only did I make a ton of great friends there and had a blast, I mean, the culture and everything about that place is just really fun and, and inspiring, but every person at Facebook in one way or another is a data geek. They even have an eight week training camp called Data Camp that everyone has to go through in order to understand how to use all the different data systems they have because that is at the center of how they innovate and how they keep you know, seeing continued success. So as much as I loved Facebook, I had just got married and bought a home here in San Diego and the travel Monday through Thursday every single week just took a toll on me and I had to stop. So I landed a remote position with Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox. Spent a couple good years there helping them launch Firefox OS to the world. 
And during that time, I also started to make online courses for Pluralsight, which was an online training provider, kind of like the Netflix for learning how to become a programmer. Besides just authoring courses for Pluralsight, I actually joined them as the chief data officer. Originally, I was the VP of data and we grew the program. The whole idea was to help the company become data focused and use data as a driving force in all of the decision making from the C-level down to the frontline sales rep. I spent a couple years at Pluralsight doing just that, building out the company's data organization. We had data analysts, data scientists, engineers, all working together to help propel the company forward. And in 2016, after having my son, I decided that I wanted to go back to making content. So I quit. This is when things got pretty interesting and I dove straight into making online courses again and put out almost 25 that year plus the following with Pluralsight and lynda.com. So prior to quitting Pluralsight, I did something that is probably not the smartest. I bought an expensive car, I bought a Tesla Model S. And I did it because I needed something that was safe for the family. I was driving an old beat up pickup truck at the time. But I also did it because I love technology, which again goes back to my childhood. And cars were really disappointing. And in fact, most of them are incredibly disappointing still. But Tesla had really changed the game with the Model S and so I was drawn to it. And buying a used one made it seem more feasible in terms of the financial uh, aspect and I, I fell in love. And that's really when things started to get interesting. So as someone who's making online courses for Pluralsight and Linda, I wanted to do YouTube videos as little teasers, little data tips to get you to be interested in then going and watching or purchasing the full blown course on one of those platforms. That was until about November of 2016 when my wife asked me how much money we were saving on gas by having an electric car, a Tesla, versus a regular gas car. So in this video, I basically answered that question. What is the monthly cost of owning a Tesla? And I was just looking at fuel costs, essentially, how much it costs to charge versus what gas cost. It was done with horrible lighting, 720p, and was basically just me talking through a spreadsheet. I didn't really expect much of it. To my surprise, within the first week, I had about 200,000 views on that video. Um, I think prior to that, my biggest video was maybe 3,000 total. So this really kind of blew me away and I didn't know what to make of it. This is when I realized that Tesla fans also had a love for data like I did. So I started to experiment with some other Tesla related videos and some that weren't Tesla related. I quickly realized that no one cared at all to hear me speak about anything but Tesla. It really was pretty clear when I put out those other videos. So in January, I decided to focus exclusively on Tesla related content and other areas like solar and energy. And this is when Teslanomics was born. Since January, over 40,000 of you have joined me on this journey to look at the data behind this company and the related industries and understand what's really going on. Over 6 million times, you and others have watched one of our videos, and I'm more passionate now than ever about making great content for you. I'm building a team here, and we're looking to one day take over YouTube. Okay, maybe we won't take over YouTube, but hey, think big, right? So if you know others that love data and technology, especially those that are changing our world in profound ways, like the stuff Tesla is doing, let them know about us. Tell them to come join us, and together we can understand this world better by looking at the data and then trying to extract the meaning from it. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here soon.